first of all, thank you all for being here today and to be respectful to everyone's time. We have a, a busy day and I know you all have a busy day. I am uh, Phil Rowe, Chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee. And I've asked you to be here, I ask you to be here today to, to let us explain our situation with the Blue Water Navy. For those of you all who may not be aware, most of you are, but for your viewers or readers or listeners, um, there was a presumption made if you served in Vietnam, put boots on the ground, or went up the brown water, um, that if you were exposed to dioxin, Agent Orange, or other herbicides, that there may be some illnesses that uh, were exacerbated or caused by this uh, exposure. This also occurred um, in uh, Korea, where the DMZ was also sprayed, that I walked through many times uh, over 40 years ago. Uh, many of these presumptions, I'll just briefly go over a couple of them. Uh, chronic B-cell lymphoma, uh, type 2 diabetes, ischemic heart disease, Hodgkin's disease, multiple myeloma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, prostate cancer, uh, other respiratory cancers, and, and many other presumptions. Uh, the group that was left out were the men and women who served on the surface ships just off the coast of Vietnam. And now for over three decades, we uh, as a legislative body have tried to uh, come to some resolution about how these men and women should be treated. This committee, and I want to thank all members of this committee uh, who have stepped up and really tried to resolve this problem um, and to, to once and for all get this off the table for our nation's heroes. Um, we, we have uh, had a bill that was debated thoroughly here in this committee, in this very room. Uh, it was passed overwhelmingly 382 to zero uh, without a single objection uh, through here, and we discussed it in great detail. Um, it's been a little bit frustrating because we had a CBO score that we paid for, and I want to thank our VSO partners for being right along with us because what we did to pay for this were increase some fees for uh, housing when you, um, for making a loan, I mean for a home, a VA loan. And these increased fees coming from veterans went to veterans. And this was a major step to get this paid for and to treat everybody exactly the same. When we pass this over to the Senate, uh, Senator Isaacson and Tester have been great partners. Uh, they have really, really worked very hard to get this legislation passed. And there have been some objections, and two of those objections from the Senate were the science based behind this, which I've read both studies. Um, my background as a physician, uh, I have read both of them. Um, the science is, at, at best, I'll say it's not great, uh, the presumption and the cause and effect of this. But it's time to move past that. And I, I want to thank the committee for going along and, and listening to, to all the testimony we've had here about that issue. Number two was paying for it. And it seemed like every time we would pay for it, there'd be another roadblock that would come up. We'd meet that roadblock. We'd say, we have the funding for this, even when the CBO score went up. And uh, I feel very comfortable about uh, this bill being fully funded. I want to read you just a quote that Dr. Shulkin, the previous VA secretary, said. There is no doubt our Vietnam veterans have waited way too long for us to bring this to resolution. The problem, as you know, it is, and it will not be guided by scientific evidence, as I just mentioned. I wish it that it is good policy for us to be able to get solid scientific evidence. So we just have to do the right thing. And I appreciate your leadership on this and you wanting to bring this to resolution. I will be meeting this afternoon with the Blue Water veterans. I am absolutely committed to working with you and the rest of the committee to bring this to resolution. They shouldn't be waiting any longer. I could not agree more. And I'm willing to, and I know this, this members of this committee who've been incredibly, incredibly supportive of veterans' issues are willing to stay here as long as we need to stay here to get this job done. And if we don't, we have to start all over again in next Congress. We're this close to solving a decades old problem for 90,000 of our colleagues. And I said this, and I say this as a personal thing. If we wait long enough, it won't matter because they'll all be gone. And we cannot do that any longer. At this point, I want to, there are going to be many speakers, and so they're going to introduce each other. It's my privilege uh, today to, uh, to introduce the vice ranking member, the next chairman of the committee, Mr. Takano of California. 
Thank you, Chairman Rowe, for the introduction and for putting together this press conference on such short notice. Uh, and to all my colleagues here uh, today, and especially I want to, I know how much this means to you, how it means, it means a lot to all of us, uh, the work we've been able to do on a bipartisan basis. Uh, and uh, there's a joke that sometimes uh, the enemy isn't the other party, it's the Senate. Um, but, uh, and the Senate's not the end, but, but in this particular case, they're being awfully difficult. In June, the House unanimously passed the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act, but sadly, Blue Water Navy veterans are still waiting for their government uh, to deliver on the promise it made to them years ago. All because a handful, and I mean a handful, of my Republican Senate colleagues are putting partisan politics ahead of, justice, of the justice these veterans are owed. The clock is ticking. We are running out of time, and our veterans should not be kept waiting any longer. I urge uh, Leader McConnell to do the right thing by our veterans and bring up our House bill for a vote in the Senate before they gavel, gavel out for the holidays. Our House bill would, would pass overwhelmingly uh, with bipartisan support. Uh, there really is no better way to close out this Congress than by coming together on this important issue. It would be a grave injustice for us to have to go through this process again in the next Congress because our Republican counterparts in the Senate have once again decided to block a good piece of legislation. And again, I can't thank Chairman Rowe enough for continuing to demand Senate action on this issue, and I commend his leadership. To our VSOs and veterans watching at home, no matter what the outcome, uh, know that we will keep working on the issue of toxic exposures in the 116th Congress. I want to emphasize now is really not the time to be talking about new pay force. Uh, it's, we don't have enough time to debate them. I am confident, as Chairman Rowe is, that we can pay for this. Uh, and uh, I'm glad that you're dubious about the science uh, in, in, in the analysis. Uh, I am uh, looking forward to working with all my colleagues uh, in the committee to continue making this a priority. <clears throat> and uh, now I'd like to introduce uh, uh, the Chairman of the Subcommittee on Disability uh, Assistance and Memorial Affairs, uh, my colleague from the state of Illinois, I believe, uh, Chairman Boast. Thank you, Chairman Takano. Um, let me just say this. All of us up here are up here doing this in a bipartisan manner. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. We know this bill. We know why we worked on it. We know that we have the pay for. It is ridiculous that our veterans are meant to be hung out on the line and wait longer because the Senate can't decide to move it. We deal with it with many other bills, and it's a pretty common occurrence around here. But this bill, it goes to the heart of those, those men and women who served. We have come up with the bill. It was unanimously passed. That's why we're showing this bipartisan effort here. That's why each one of us is stepping forward. We want to thank the VSOs. We want to thank the chairman for his hard work. All of us work very, very hard at this. It does not need to die in the Senate. It needs to move on so we can move on to other things. And with that, I need to uh, introduce a representative from California, Representative Valadeo. Thanks, Mike. First, I want to say thank you to Chairman Rowe. Um, when, I, when this bill was introduced earlier this Congress, uh, I remember having a conversation with the chairman and him specifically saying that this was his number one priority. And you've stuck to that word, and the amount of effort you've put into this has been truly amazing. So I really appreciate everything you've done, and uh, especially hosting this today. I'd like to thank all the members for being here today. Um, we've worked really hard on this bill. This bill's been out for a while. Uh, I introduced it this Congress, but other members had it before me. And it's one of those things that every single day it seems to just get um, time passes and nothing happens. And today we know that there are probably about 90,000 Vietnam era veterans that can benefit from this, with only a small percentage of them actually um, showing any sort of signs that, uh, that would actually require these benefits, but still, we made a promise to these uh, veterans. We made this promise when we passed the uh, or Agent Orange Act of 1991, and Congress intended to, to take care of our veterans, and uh, it was a promise made, and I think it's a promise that should be kept. Uh, the VA's 2002 decision that reversed that uh, is a sad situation for our veterans. And when you think about uh, the number of veterans out there being such a small number, um, and it's a promise that could be easily kept. Yes, there's a cost to it, uh, but it's minimal. And there is a cost to a lot of things we do in Washington, but this is one that you've got folks who put their lives on the line for, for our country, for our freedom. There is no reason why 
the Senate shouldn't step up and pass this piece of legislation. It passed unanimously off the House floor. How many pieces of legislation come up and pass unanimously? To have support from both sides of the aisle and not have the opportunity to at least have a vote on the Senate floor now coming down on its few remaining days. And when you look at the Senate, all those senators have to look at one another and think to themselves, how many people are gonna die by the time this bill comes up in the next Congress? Why wait another day? Why wait another year? And we all know the process here is slow. The House can move things usually pretty quick, but the Senate moves very, very slow. And so to have it so close, to be right on their doorstep, to have the ability to have this done and, and potentially give all these Blue Water Navy veterans a Christmas present, uh, seems disappointing to me that they wouldn't take this up and take the opportunity to do the right thing here. So again, I'd like to thank all my colleagues. Uh, the incoming chairman, I hope that this will be a priority for you as well as it was for, for our uh, outgoing chairman. And uh, we were lucky to have this much support. And I, again, thank everyone for being here today and playing such an important role in this. And next, I'm supposed to call up my friend and colleague from California, Lou Correa. Thank you, Mr. Valadell. Just wanted to say thank you to all our veterans for your service to our country. Thank you to our Vietnam War vets. Congressman Correa here from California, home of the largest number of veterans in the country, and we are blessed to have you. Vietnam War vets, we should have welcomed you back as heroes decades ago. We didn't. Today have the opportunity to fix that wrong just a little bit more by giving you what you've earned, by keeping our promise to you, taking care of you. Democrats and Republicans standing here, Democrats and Republicans that have vetted a bill, a bill that works, a bill that's paid for. And today I simply ask the Senate and the President to do what's right. Let's move this legislation forward Let's not keep our veterans waiting, and let's keep our promise to our heroes. God bless America. God bless our veterans. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to introduce my member from California, uh, ranking member in the Health Committee, Member Brownlee. Thank you, Mr. Correa. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rowe, and to all my colleagues on both sides of the aisle who are here today. I think this bipartisan showing demonstrates just how important and pressing this issue is. Our nation made a promise to the Blue Water Vietnam veterans the day they took the oath to protect our country, to serve them as they have so bravely served us. It is our responsibility to make good on that promise, and finally, after so many years, to ensure they receive the benefits they have earned and they deserve. What kind of message does it send to every man and woman wearing a uniform stationed around the world in harm's way if we let this year end with no resolution to this injustice. So I call on my Senate colleagues to immediately pass the House version of this legislation so we can get so we can get it to the president's desk for signature at long last. I thank you again for all being here, and it's my uh, privilege to introduce the uh, vice uh, chair of the committee, um, uh, Mr. Bill Rockus from Florida. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Brownlee. I appreciate it so very much. Uh, first, I want to say something, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, I want to commend Chairman Rowe. A good friend of mine by the name of Tony Orlando, who's a tremendous veterans advocate, a great singer, by the way, as well. Uh, I, I, I heard him once uh, in a television interview say that uh, they asked him in the program, uh, are you a Democrat or a Republican? And he said, what difference does it make in this case? I'm for the veteran. I'm for the veteran. And this is the way Chairman Rowe has led this committee these last two years, and he should be commended for it. We appreciate your service, sir, uh, in the military, but your continued service as well. So uh, we've got to get this done, folks, for our veterans, our Blue Water Navy veterans. We promised them that we were going to get this done. Uh, we fulfilled that promise in the House of Representatives. You've heard it. Uh, everywhere I go, I speak to a lot of veterans groups, but also uh, general audiences, and there's always a Blue Water Navy veteran in that audience. I understand there are 90,000, uh, and we can't wait for the signs. 
We've waited long enough. We have to get this done. The Senate must move. And uh, I appreciate uh, Chairman Rowe and, of course, the, the vice chair, ranking member, uh, but future <laughs> chairman, uh, holding this press conference. Uh, we're not going to give up. We're not going to give up. This has to get done, this Congress. And I know the vast majority uh, on both sides of the aisle and the Senate are for this particular bill. So we've got to give. The, our veterans have earned these benefits. Let's get it done for them, our true heroes. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Representative uh, Peters, uh, I want to introduce him. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bilirakis. Uh, you know, I often, a lot of us are often frustrated by the overwhelming partisanship in this place and how it really seems to make it impossible to work together to get something done. Uh, and I want to say that uh, what a pleasure it is to be part of the Veterans Affairs Committee, which I don't think there's any question is the most bipartisan uh, committee in, in Congress. Here we have something that's uh, almost universally agreed upon with, with respect to Blue Water veterans. We've lost 41,000 already. Uh, we owe it to them to take care of this before we lose a single one more. And we can do that today. So we're urging the Senate to take that vote, uh, to move this forward, and to, um, to give these veterans, to give you all uh, the support that you deserve on this issue. I want to thank uh, Chairman Rowe for, for your leadership. I want to thank, uh, in his absence, uh, Ranking Member Waltz, the, the future governor of Minnesota, uh, and our new chairman, uh, 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 Mr. Takano. Um, and uh, look forward to, to working on this to get it done. Uh, let's get it done today, but I can assure you if we don't get it done today, we'll start again on January 3rd and uh, get right back on it. And I'm uh, introducing uh, Dr. Dr. Dunn. Thank you very much. Let me add my voice uh, of support to this for, for Chairman Rowe and incoming Chairman Takano. This is a bill that is long overdue. This was a thoughtless oversight when the bill was passed. Uh, these sailors have suffered enough at the hands of our government and our society. It's time we do something right for them. And the fact that you have unanimous agreement on the committee and in the entire House that this is the right thing to do should underscore that. And I'm going to turn the microphone over to somebody who I think will uh, give more meaning to that than I ever can. He's uh, my good friend, my fellow veteran, uh, a Marine veteran from Vietnam, uh, Lieutenant General Jack Bergman. Thanks, Dr. Dunn. Folks, it's an honor to be among you, especially under the leadership of Dr. Rowe these last two years and Ranking Member Walsh himself, a sergeant major. So when you get a sergeant major and a doctor in the room, as the general, you're number three in the pecking order, you know that to start with. And that's okay because, <laughs> you know, it's not where you start, it's where you finish in life. So let's talk about theory versus reality. And we have some, I guess, some concerns uh, across in the other building uh, on the other side of the Capitol that the science isn't well-founded. Okay, so there's some theory there, there's some reality. I'd like to put some reality in it for you today. Come along with me as a helicopter aircraft commander uh, flying on and off Navy ships in Vietnam in the 1972 timeframe. You could have been a part of the crew, you could have been a part of the infantry, you could in some cases even have been part of the press to go along on that ride and think about how we left the ship, we flew, we landed, we got out, we did our business, got back on the helicopter and came back aboard the ship. We didn't wash it down in a sterile environment, whether it be the helicopter or our flight suits or our camis or whatever we were watching. Let's enough with the confidence in the science. That's the reality. Get the bill passed. Do the right thing for all of our Naval Service veterans who served in Vietnam. We owe it to them and welcome home. Thank you. You can see in my passion, I forgot I was supposed to do next, but that's okay. I, I turned the rotor brake on and was stopped safely. My honor to introduce Rep. Zeldin from New York. Well, thank you, General. And uh, this really is something that should have been done by now. Uh, we shouldn't even have to uh, get together as we are today. Uh, I want to commend all of uh, my colleagues here on both sides of the aisle championing this issue day in and day out. 
and also all of the veterans advocates here who, uh, while there are millions of Americans all throughout this entire country uh, relying on people in Washington to be fighting for them, advocating on the Hill, uh, the, the men and women who are here and many uh, in the audience as well, uh, this isn't your first time at this committee. This isn't your first time at the Hill. You're always here advocating for causes that are so important. And to uh, the general's point, if you actually go out into our districts and meet these Vietnam veterans who are suffering the impacts of exposure to Agent Orange, try to convince them that science is not there. There are no facts uh, to support the argument that this bill is essential. Say to the face of all of those Vietnam veterans who are suffering, uh, some who have been suffering for a very long time. Uh, that requires a lot more courage than uh, standing you know, at your, your desk with a gavel, with your microphone turned on, saying that there's no signs. Uh, and I think as long as they're not willing to look those veterans in the eye and say that science is not on their side, they need to stand down and remove their opposition to this bill so that it would pass. Uh, I'm proud to represent the 1st Congressional District of New York. It's on the east end of Long Island. Uh, in Suffolk County, my home county, we have the highest population of veterans of any county in New York, uh, one of the highest veterans populations of any county in the entire country. Uh, and for us, we have a lot of Vietnam veterans who are personally advocating to me, to Congressman King, Congressman Swazi, Congresswoman Rice. Uh, we hear it all across Long Island, so we know that facts and reality on, are on our side. I want to point out that this bill includes a, a, a proposal that I had filed, the Flexible VA Loan Guarantee Act. Uh, this legislation was passed by the House last Congress. Uh, it expands veterans' opportunity for home ownership by removing that cap on VA home loans. Uh, so I, I want to thank Chairman Rowe not only for uh, his efforts for moving this bill, but also including so many other great proposals. Uh, th this is uh, a bill that is a product of a committee working exceptionally well. And as someone who has uh, served on other committees here in Congress, I concur uh, that this is the most bipartisan committee that exists on the Hill, and that's a credit to both Republicans and Democrats who I stand with. Uh, so I thank all of them, uh, and our final message, my final message, I won't speak on behalf of anyone else, my final message uh, to all my colleagues in the Senate is to get your priorities straight and pass this bill before you go home for Christmas recess. At this time, uh, it is an honor to be able to introduce uh, the first of the uh, several veteran advocates who are here, Carlos Fuentes from the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, first and foremost, I'd like to thank all the members that are here today. It shows such a broad support here in the House, and specifically Chairman Rowe and, and uh, soon to be Chairman Takano, and uh, now Governor Walls for, for their leadership in getting us to where we are today. Uh, also, Chairman Isaacson, uh, Ranking Member Tester, uh, for their continued advocacy and, and relentless fight over in the Senate side. Um, you know, on behalf of the, of the, of the veterans who were impact, impacted by this bill, you know, they, they're, they're sick and dying, and I've spoken to um, Blue Water Navy veterans who have terminal pr uh, prostate cancer, family members who recently lost their loved ones to conditions associated to Agent Orange, uh, veterans whose lives depend on the passage of this bill. Um, these veterans are sick and dying, and, and, and they're being deprived of benefits that they have earned. You know, my good friend, Gene Clark, is turning 72 uh, just this past week and, and tells me that his fight is diminishing. Um, it's disgraceful that uh, veterans who desperately need health care and benefits to prolong their lives are being denied that opportunity by two senators. Senator Lee, who uh, thinks the evidence is not there, and I'll tell him, uh, VFW tells him, uh, we don't need more sick veterans to prove sufficient evidence. And Senator Enzi, um, who thinks we don't have enough uh, money to take care of veterans, uh, if America can't afford to take care of its veterans, then we need to stop creating them. You know, I'm not a Blue Water Navy veteran, but as an Iraq War veteran, uh, taking care of a Blue Water Navy veterans sets a, a tone that Congress will stand by uh, the newest generation of veterans when we need them. Um, and, and this must be done. The VFW will continue this fight. Blue Water, uh, Korea DMZ, Thailand veterans have identified benefits for too long. 
and the VFW will not rest until this bill is passed. So thank you very much. Uh, with that, I would like to turn it to my good friend, Randy Rees, the Executive Director of Disabled American Veterans. Good morning, all. On behalf of our one million members and auxiliary of DAV, we are deeply disappointed that this bicameral, bipartisan effort in Congress to pass the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act have been blocked by just a couple of senators. Despite passing in the House in June by unanimous 382 to zero, the Senate has been unable to take further action solely due to opposition from Senator Mike Lee of Utah and Senator Mike Enzi of Wyoming. Although our united efforts fell short so far this year, We've made historic progress, and today's the opportunity to right the wrong. I want to recognize and thank members of the House who led the Blue Water Navy effort, particularly Dr. Phil Rowe, Chairman of the House Veterans Affairs Committee, Congressman Tim Waltz, incoming Chairman Mark Takano, and Congressman David Valadeo. We're also grateful to all the bipartisan efforts in the Senate, led by VA Committee Chairman Johnny Isaacson, Ranking Member John Tester, and Senators Gillibrand and Danes. Contrary to what Senators Lee and Enzi, as well as VA, are saying, it was a bureaucratic decision in 2002 that excluded Blue Water Navy veterans, not any scientific evidence. And it's long past the time for Congress to correct this injustice before it's too late for our Vietnam veterans. We reject the suggestion that our nation cannot afford the cost of caring for and compensating our Blue Water Navy veterans for their wartime service-connected disabilities. These brave men and women have earned these benefits, and we have sacrificed the sacred, or we have a sacred obligation, all of us, to ensure the promises are fulfilled. Although we did not get the legislation over the finish line just yet, Hopefully we can get that done today, but if not, rest assured we are not done. We will not let the opposition from just a handful of senators block the will of Congress and the will of the American people to do what's right. We are committed to working with leaders in the House and hopefully in the Senate as well to quickly take this up and pass this legislation, if not passed today, as one of the very first actions of the new 116th Congress. We'll be calling on Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to make these forgotten heroes a priority by scheduling floor time and debate to vote on this legislation early next year. We will continue calling on Senators Lee and Enzi to listen to the voices of America's veterans, including those in Utah and in Wyoming, and to put an end to their blockade of Blue Water Navy legislation. And we're calling on President Trump to stand up for all of our Americans' veterans by declaring support of the legislation. The time to take action is now before the Vietnam generation is gone. At this time, I'll introduce my colleague from the American Legion, Chana. Good morning, my name is Shinin Nunsbong. I have the honor of serving as the National Director of Veterans Affairs and Rehabilitation for the American Legion and our nearly two million members. Allow me to begin by thanking Chairman Rowe and Congressman Takano and other members of this committee for holding this event. It is unfortunate to be standing here today under a massive cloud of disappointment. Instead of celebrating and applauding that Blue Water Navy veterans will receive the quality care and benefits they deserve from VA. The members of this committee have put their energy into action in HR 299 was passed out of the House without a vote in opposition. The American Legion and our nearly two million members are extremely disappointed that this common sense bill was not sent to President Trump, who promised so aggressively to take care of the men and women who served our country. We are proud to stand with Chairman Rowe, Congressman Takano, and the members of this committee in support of our Blue Water Navy veterans. Thank you for continuing to work in a bipartisan manner to assist the veterans of our great nation. It is my privilege now to introduce Rick Wildman from Vietnam Veterans of America. Thank you for bringing somebody from Hollywood. 
want to thank Dr. Rowe as, uh, as well as Mr. Walls in absentia and the new incoming chairman, um, uh, Mr. Takano from California. You can't have a little bit of integrity. You either have integrity or you don't. For the Office of Post-Deployment Health to keep insisting that the science isn't there when the National Academy of Medicine report from 2011 showed that science is there and it's clear as a bell. The only reason why they didn't recommend kicking it up a notch was A, pressure from the VA, and B, most importantly, is they said, we don't know exactly how much all were exposed. Um, and we said, well, you don't know how much I was exposed in i -Corps, Vietnam, the northern part of southern Vietnam, or my buddy who served down in the rice paddies in the, in the southern part of the country. And they said, well, that doesn't matter. You both were exposed to enough. I said, okay, answer us this question. Doctor, can you tell us what is a safe dose of dioxin? And her eyes got as big as pie plates. And she said, well, there isn't one. We said, that's just our point. That's seven parts per tree and up is considered to be harmful. So you don't have to take a lot with the, uh, looking at the hydrology of the South China Sea, particularly during monsoon, and how far out the residue was washed. There has been so much bogus nonsense coming out of VA. We're gonna argue in the future not to, to disband that section and kick the science over to the National Institutes of Health, particularly the National Institute for Environmental Health Services, so we get honest, for real science, not bureaucratic gobbledygook. Uh, it's time for this bill to pass now, and thank you to Dr. Rowe and to all of my colleagues who have worked many, many hours to try and help bring the truth of this matter to the fore. I'm supposed to introduce probably somebody, my friend from the Blinded Veterans Association. Uh, actually, I'm Jim Kiken. I represent the Military Veterans Advocacy. Um, I'm not blind. I just happen to have a dog. I'm lucky. Um, I do want to start off by uh, uh, expressing my appreciation to the general and his uh, recognition of rank structure as a retired sergeant major in the United States Marine Corps, um, and also his, what he has expressed uh, about this bill. This is dead serious, um, and to leave these veterans hanging out there is just not the right thing to do. I want to express the thanks of military veterans advocacy to the chairman, the entire uh, committee, and everyone that's worked so hard, all 382 in the House and 98 in the Senate, to uh, get this through. And uh, uh, we will continue our fight both in the legislation but also litigation. Uh, we do have a uh, current uh, case pending. Uh, was just heard in front of the, uh, the appeals court of the Federal Circuit. So we're hopeful there that uh, one way or another, we're gonna look out for our veterans. And I'd like to uh, bring up John Davis from the FRA. Oh, right behind me. Thank you. Um, uh, hi, I'm John Davis with the, from the Fleet Reserve Association. We re represent Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard enlisted people who have served in that, those branches or are serving. And so this issue is very important to us. Uh, I want to thank every, uh, all the legislators here for their uh, support in the past and also the fact that it passed the House 382 to nothing. I think is a sign that uh, the Senate should bring it up for a vote. Uh, when I think about this issue, I think about the whole Vietnam War era. And I remember, I was too young to serve in the Vietnam War, uh, but I remember those days very vividly. And I remember a uh, service member coming home. Uh, the, at those days, they wore their uniform when they traveled back from Vietnam. And they would be in the bus station or the train station or the airport. And they'd be pretty much ignored by people because the Vietnam War was so unpopular. And even in some cases, they were not only ignored, they were disrespected. People came out and said horrible things to them about being, serving in Vietnam in an unpopular war. Uh, now the Senate doesn't want to vote for this legislation. And I think that is once again, people in America disrespecting and ignoring our Vietnam veterans. And I call on the Senate to vote on this legislation today and get this issue uh, resolved. Thank you. 
We'll be glad to take any questions at this point. I really appreciate everyone being here, and uh, I think you can see the interest with the members and the VSOs to stick around this long, and I appreciate them doing that. Yes. I think um, I think it's it ought to get done in December, and I worry about January. <laughs> and I associate myself with the chairman's <laughs> remarks. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I, I think that uh, we have a chairman now who is a medical doctor, and uh, he's vetted uh, the science from his point of view, and I believe we need to move forward with the bill we have, and I don't want to deviate from the message that it